Lectures to my students by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Lecture number two, the call to the ministry. Any Christian has the right to disseminate the gospel who has the ability to do so, and more, he not only has the right, but it is his duty so to do as long as he lives. Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. The propagation of the gospel is left not to a few, but to all the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the measure of grace entrusted to him by the Holy Spirit, each man is bound to minister in his day and generation, both to the church and among unbelievers. Indeed, this question goes beyond men, and even includes the whole of the other sex. Whether believers are male or female, they are all bound, when enabled by divine grace, to exert themselves to the utmost to extend the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our service, however, need not take the particular form of preaching. Certainly, in some cases, it must not, as, for instance, in the case of females, whose public teaching is expressly prohibited. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. But yet, if we have the ability to preach, we are bound to exercise it. I do not, however, in this lecture, allude to occasional preaching, or any other form of ministry common to all saints, but to the work and office of the bishopric, in which is included both teaching and bearing rule in the church, which requires the dedication of a man's entire life to spiritual work, and separation from every secular calling, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, and entitles the man to cast himself for temporal supplies upon the church of God, since he gives up all his time, energies, and endeavors, for the good of those over whom he presides, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. Such a man is addressed by Peter in the words, quote, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 Now all in a church cannot oversee or rule. There must be some to be overseen and ruled. And we believe that the Holy Ghost appoints in the church of God some to act as overseers while others are made willing to be watched over for their good. All are not called to labor in word and doctrine or to be elders or to exercise the office of a bishop, nor should all aspire to such works, since the gifts necessary are nowhere promised to all. But those should addict themselves to such important engagements who feel, like the apostle, that they have, quote, received this ministry, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. No man may intrude into the sheepfold as an under-shepherd. He must have an eye to the chief shepherd, and wait his beck and command. Or ever a man stands forth as God's ambassador, he must wait for the call from above. And if he does not so, but rushes into the sacred office, the Lord will say of him and others like him, quote, I sent them not, neither commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 32. By reference to the Old Testament, you will find the messengers of God in the Old Dispensation claiming to hold commissions from Jehovah. Isaiah tells us that one of the seraphim touched his lips with a live coal from off the altar, and the voice of the Lord said, quote, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Then said the prophet, quote, Here am I, send me. He ran not before he had been thus especially visited of the Lord and qualified for his mission. Quote, How shall they preach except they be sent? End quote. Were the words as yet unuttered, but their solemn meaning was well understood. Jeremiah details his call in his first chapter, quote, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 4 through 10. Varying in its outward form, but to the same purport, was the commission of Ezekiel. It runs thus in his own words, quote, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. Quote, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 1 through 4. 
Daniel's call to prophesy, although not recorded, is abundantly attested by the visions granted to him and the exceeding favor which he had with the Lord, both in his solitary meditations and public acts. It is not needful to pass all the other prophets in review, for they all claim to speak with, quote, thus saith the Lord, end quote. In the present dispensation, the priesthood is common to all the saints, but to prophesy, or what is analogous thereto, namely, to be moved by the Holy Ghost, to give oneself up wholly to the proclamation of the gospel is, as a matter of fact, the gift and calling of only a comparatively small number, and surely these need to be as sure of the rightfulness of their position as were the prophets, and yet how can they justify their office except by a similar call? Nor need any imagine that such calls are a mere delusion, and that none are in this age separated for the peculiar work of teaching and overseeing the church, for the very names given to ministers in the New Testament imply a previous call to their work. The apostle says, quote, Now then, we are ambassadors for God, end quote. But does not the very soul of the ambassadorial office lie in the appointment which is made by the monarch represented? An ambassador unsent would be a laughing stock. Men who dare to avow themselves ambassadors for Christ must feel most solemnly that the Lord has committed to them the word of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. If it be said that this is restricted to the apostles, I answer that the epistle is written not in the name of Paul only, but of Timothy also, and hence includes other ministry besides apostleship. In the first epistle to the Corinthians we read, quote, Let a man so account of us. The us here, meaning Paul and Sothenes. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1 as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Surely a steward must hold his office from the master. He cannot be a steward merely because he chooses to be so, or is so regarded by others. If any of us should elect ourselves stewards to the Marquis of Westminster and proceed to deal with his property, we should have our mistake very speedily pointed out to us in the most convincing manner. There must evidently be authority ere a man can legally become a bishop. Quote, the steward of God. Titus chapter 1 verse 7. The apocalyptic title of angel, Revelation chapter 2 verse 1, means a messenger, and how shall men be Christ's herald, unless by his election and ordination? If the reference of the word angel to the minister be questioned, we should be glad to have it shown that it can relate to anyone else. To whom would the spirit write in the church as its representative, but to someone in a position analogous to that of the presiding elder? Titus was bidden to make full proof of his ministry. There was surely something to prove. Some are, quote, vessels unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 21. The master is not to be denied the choice of the vessels which he uses. He will still say of certain men as he did of Saul of Tarsus, quote, He is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles. Acts, chapter 9, verse 15. When our Lord ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men, and it is noteworthy that these gifts were men set apart for various works. Quote, he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, from which it is evident that certain individuals are, as a result of our Lord's ascension, bestowed upon the churches as pastors. They are given of God, and consequently not self-elevated to their position. Brethren, I trust you may be able one day to speak of the flock over whom, quote, the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. And I pray that every one of you may be able to say with the apostle of the Gentiles that your ministry is not of man, neither by man, but that you have received it of the Lord, Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. In you may that ancient promise be fulfilled, quote, I will give them pastors according to mine heart, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. May the Lord himself fulfill in your several persons his own declaration, quote, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. End quote. May you take forth the precious from the vile, and so be as God's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 19. May the Lord make manifest by you the savor of the knowledge of Jesus in every place, and make you, quote, unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Having a priceless treasure in earthen vessels, may the excellency of the divine power rest upon you, and so may you both glorify God and clear yourselves from the blood of all men. As the Lord Jesus went up to the mount and called to him whom he would, and then sent them forth to preach. Mark chapter 3 verse 13. Even so may he select you, call you upward to commune with himself, and send you forth as his elect servants to bless both the church and the world. How may a young man know whether he is called or not? That is a weighty inquiry, and I desire to treat it most solemnly. Oh, for divine guidance in so doing. That hundreds have missed their way and stumbled against a pulpit is sorrowfully evident from the fruitless ministries and decaying churches which surround us. 
It is a fearful calamity to a man to miss his calling, and to the church upon whom he imposes himself, his mistake involves an affliction of the most grievous kind. It would be a curious and painful subject for reflection, the frequency with which men in the possession of reason mistake the end of their existence, and aim at objects which they were never intended to pursue. The writer who penned the following lines must surely have had his eye upon many ill-occupied pulpits. Declare ye sages if you find, amongst animals of every kind, of each condition, sort, and size, from whales and elephants to flies, a creature that mistakes his plan and air so constantly as man. Each kind pursues its proper good and seeks enjoyment, rest, and food, as nature points and never errs in what it chooses or prefers. Man only blunders, though possessed of reason far above the rest. Descend to instances and try, an ox will not attempt to fly, or leave his pasture in the wood with fishes to explore the flood. Man only acts of every creature in opposition to his nature, 